In this video, we're going to look at some quick worked examples of finding the area and perimeter of composite shapes. A composite shape is just two or more shapes joined together. What I want to start off with now is the area and perimeter of a rectangle. So if we have a rectangle now and we have the length and the width, so let's say that this is going to be the length and this is the width. The area of a rectangle is now the length multiplied by the width. The perimeter is going to be two lots of the length plus the width. Now, in reality, it's easier with numbers working out the perimeter. All we're going to do is collect them up and add them together. So let's say I had now a rectangle. Let's have a rectangle here. And we had now a length, and this length was going to be 8 centimetres. And this length was going to be, let's say that's going to be 4 centimetres. The area would be 8 times by 4. So we can see 8 times by 4 is going to give us 32. The units are going to be centimetres, and because it's an area, we will have centimetres squared. The perimeter is simply going to be all of the side lengths added together. So if I put 8 centimetres and 4 centimetres, all we need to do is add them. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 8 is 20, plus 4 is 24. So we can see that that would be 24, and that's centimetres. This now is a length, so we use centimetres. This is an area, so we use centimetres squared. And this right here, all I've done is added the length plus the width and times it by 2. As stated, though, it's easier just to write the dimensions on. Let's go ahead now and look at a composite shape. So what I'm going to do is make this slightly easier by simply now adding two rectangles. So our composite shape might look like this. Now we could have on here the dimensions. I'm just going to copy this. Let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll look at an example now where we don't have those. So if I move that just here. Now we might be given that this has a length here now of 10. We might have a length here. Let's say that this is going to be 7. We might be told that this length here is going to be now. Let's say that this is going to be Three, and we'll put these as centimetres, so centimetres, and then we're going to have centimetres, we'll have centimetres here, and we might be told now that this entire length, and let's just put that length on here, so what we might have here now is this entire length is going to give us now, let's say, 11 centimetres. What we might be asked to do is work out the area and the perimeter of this composite shape. This is a composite shape as we've got now two rectangles joined together. The first thing I like to do with these is add on the unknown sides. So if we look at this one, this is all 11 centimetres. If this part is 3 centimetres, the missing part must be 8 centimetres. So I can write that on. So I've got 8 centimetres here. I know that this whole length right here is 10. If this part is 7, the missing one must be 3 centimetres. What we're going to do is to work out the area of the composite shape, is work out the area of this part right here and add it to the area of this part right here. So if we think about the first rectangle, what we have now is a rectangle and it's got a length of 10 centimetres and a width of 3 centimetres. So when we're finding the area, we do 10 times by 3, so this is going to give me 30 centimetres squared. That's that part. If we now look at the bottom bit, I've got the dimensions. This is an 8 by 3 centimetre rectangle. A common error is that pupils often put that it's an 11 by 3. We've only got this part. 8 by 3 is 24. So we've got now a 24 centimetre squared rectangle. So to find the area of the composite shape, we add those together. So 24 plus 30, let's write this here, 24 plus 30 is going to be 54 centimetres squared. And that now is the area. So we would say now, shown full workings, area is 54 centimetres squared. If we think about the perimeter, all we're going to do is collect up now the lengths. So that's the area. The perimeter is the distance around the outside. The area is the space inside. The perimeter is the distance around the outside. So I've got 10 plus 3, which is 13, plus 7, which is 20, 
plus 8, which is 28, plus 3, which is 31, plus now the 11, which gives me 42 centimetres. That is the distance around the outside. So we can say that the perimeter will be equal to 10 plus 3 plus 7 plus 8 plus 3 plus 11 and we simply write that down now and that's going to give us the value we've just found. So adding these together we get 28, we get 31, so we have 42 centimetres. When you're doing the perimeter make sure you put on all of the different lengths. So let's now look at this shape here. Often with these composite shapes, they won't give us now this line here, and they will just give us some dimensions. So let's put on some dimensions and look at a possible way that we could split this shape up. So let's say now we have the following. Let's put some different dimensions on. Let's say that this is going to be 8 metres. We'll be told now that this is going to be, let's say this is 2 metres. Let's put on it now that this is going to be 3 metres. And again, this isn't a scale. And this one right here is going to be, let's say we're going to have on here. In fact, we'll put it on here. Let's say that this is going to be 9 metres. The first thing I'd want to do now is put the missing lengths on. If this is 3 and this is 8, this one must be 5. So that's 5 metres from here to here. If I look at this one, this is 9 metres, that's 2, so this must be 7 metres. At this stage, I've got lots of choices to work out the area. What I could do now is cut the line just here. If I did this, I would have a 2 by 8 plus a 7 by 3. Or what I could do is cut it just here. If I did that, I would have a 3 by 9 plus a 5 by 2. Or what I could do here is turn this into one big rectangle and what I'd have here now is a 9 by 8 minus a 5 by 7. So this is entirely up to you on how you want to split it up. So if I thought about splitting it up, I would like to put now the line across here. You don't have to, but it might help you out. So what we've got then is an 8 by 2 and this rectangle will be 16 meters squared so the length times the width this one is a 7 by 3 it's not a 9 by 3 as 9 is the total height so this one will be 21 meters squared 16 plus 21 will be equal to 37 so we can say that the area is 37 meters squared now that's one way of doing it you didn't have to do it that way but that is one of the options so instead, if you decided to split it, let's look at splitting it the other way. Let's say you went now with this rectangle and this rectangle. If we went now this way round, we would have the rectangle here, which would be a 9 by 3. And we'd have this rectangle, which would be a 5 by 2. So that one would be now 10. And this one, 9 by 3, is 27. 10 and 27 is 37. Alternatively, what you could have done here is done one big rectangle. Now, if we think about the big rectangle, the big rectangle is going to be 9 by 8. And then we would simply cut away a 5 by 7. So if we look at this here, what I'm doing is finding the big one. The big one is going to be 9 by 8. So this is 9. This is 8. So the whole thing would be 9 times 8, which is 72. This one is now 5 and this is 7. This would be 35. So we're going to take this away from the big rectangle. So we'd have 72 minus 35, which is going to give us exactly the same, 37 metres squared. So entirely up to you on how you want to see it. Now, with the perimeter, I've got all of the lengths on here. So I'm just going to go ahead now and add them up. 8, and we would need to show full workings plus 2, which is 10, plus 5, which is 15, plus 7, which is 22. So we're up to now 22. Adding 3, 25. Adding 9, 34. So the perimeter is going to be 34 metres. So we can put perimeter is equal to 34 metres. In an exam, you will need to show that you're adding them up like we did before, and the units are metres. Area is metres squared. 
and then now perimeter is going to be in meters. So that is finding now the area and perimeter of composite shapes when we have rectangles. We might involve triangles with this and we will look at that in another video.